draw for you guys to us three, three in a row, but you guys get the clean sheet. Um, I guess what are maybe some of your takeaways, both positive and negative, from this one? Yeah, I think, uh, again, I think they they came in and, and sat back, and again, and I, I think their central defenders did a really good job um, defending the box, and it's always going to be tough to score a goal against a team that drops in and puts a lot of numbers in and around the box. Um, you know, I think, we, again, it comes down to making plays, and uh, we have, I think, two, three really, really good chances um, that we just didn't capitalize on. And um, But the other positive is going back from the Austin game um, is where we defended the box really poorly. Um, so you go back to the uh, Portland game, we didn't defend set pieces really well. You go to the Austin game, we didn't defend the box well. And we did both of those things tonight. And so on a day where you're not clinical in front of goal, then those are huge steps, um, especially now. I mean, the, the game had a, a real playoff feel to it, and and the margins are s thin. And and yeah, so I, I think that's the that that's the the mindset. Um, and again, I think it's important to, to um, improve with every game. Uh, obviously, from an offensive standpoint, um, this look was different than both Portland and Austin. Um, but we, we've, we're going to have to deal with this at some point moving forward. So, uh, you know, we'll break down the tape. Uh, but, but again, I think we have to be more box dangerous. In other words, uh, we're I think we're content with just keeping the ball, but never really threaten their back line. And, and so, from our setup, it's really getting our our outside central defenders in, 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 in half space crossing positions to then put pressure on their back line, pick up second ball, the ball to top of the box, and then from there create. Um, so those are some of the things that we, we try to do at halftime. Yeah, you know, and and we talked about, but you know, we'll review the tape. But again, I think um, you know, it's 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 about improving in the areas where you're deficient. And coming to the playoffs, we've got to be steely defensively, and now we just got to make plays on the offensive side. You kind of mentioned it there earlier, but just the, the atmosphere, like the playoff vibe, like you mentioned. Um, there were obviously some some frustrations there at the end between the two teams as well. I guess as things get down to the wire here in the last couple of games, how do you balance um, obviously wanting to fight for a good playoff position, but also kind of wanting guys to keep a level head and, and encourage you know overall development and stability? Yeah, no, I think emotional control is is paramount. You know, I think you know it, it's already difficult playing against really good teams. Uh, we can't make it easier for them by getting caught up in the emotional part of it, and um, and again, that's 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 we gotta we gotta take that fr from this game because again, they're, they're they're these games. I mean, they're just throwing throw-ins into the box. There's gonna be contact. There's gonna be these moments where we've got to be we got to be ahead of it, and we've got to be prepared to be, to understand that these games are gonna be more physical. Um, these, these last two games and then obviously heading into the playoffs um, and, and I think the team that keeps their cool um, and can overcome that emotional charge that these games have will find themselves in a better position. So Pablo, this is the fifth game where we've seen a different front four. Is there a strategy behind this or are we still lo looking for that formula that works? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, again, we are, you know, and, and and that's what's so tough with getting a lot of guys that come in with seven games left or eight games left is that you know we see them, we scout them, um, but then they come to our group and they have different um, skill sets um, given given the way we play because the way we play isn't necessarily how all the other players play in their respective clubs. And so it's not only about the individual, but it's also about the connections and the relationships. Um, and I, I think it's, re it's really, really important that we have uh, a definitive um, understanding of, of how we're going to go come playoff time. And that's what we've been doing is just putting players in, in, in different positions. Obviously, they understand the way we want to play, but it's really now going the next layer. It's, it's, it's the relationships in those positions that either accentuate what we're trying to do or continuing to find the right position for these guys. And, and, sorry. and then one consistency there has been over the past few games is Matt Crook starting at that that 10 spot. Can you talk about what you've liked about how he's been playing over the past few games and his development? Yeah, no, again, I think I, I go back to the San Jose game. Um, 
and I go back to the uh, um, the Houston games, which were uh, I, I think games where uh, didn't reflect the mindset of our group. Um, and you know, since then, I think Crooksy started every game, um, and what he brings is tremendous work rate defensively, which allows us to press the ball and get after the ball early in games. The other part he brings from an offensive perspective is ability to, to, to control the game with the ball. And I think his relationship with Dom has been a feature of what we've been able to do. Um, you know, tonight he released him a couple times, and, and that, that is a partnership that, that looks like it's, it's growing, um, obviously, uh, with every game. So, so for me, Crooks is, uh, is, is a staple on both sides of the ball um, that, that has put us in this position where now, you know, moving forward, like I said, the games are going to be chippy. So it's not just like the attacking side of the ball, but you've got to defend well as a group. And he really is a catalyst to both pressing out, but also neutralizing their uh, deep holding midfield. Yeah, no, I think there's a couple plays where, again, you make subs, and, and oftentimes it's difficult for the guys to get up to speed of the game. And, and like I said, with the playoff field, everything's contested. There's not easy turns. And there's, there's a couple moments where, you know, in order to build momentum, the player on the ball is responsible for the team, right? And so when you have the ball, you are either adding to the control or you're taken away from our control as a team with your individual decisions. And there was a couple plays where we're in the uh, offensive third, um, and there's a couple guys that just lose the ball cheap. And now it becomes transitional. And now they get a throw in. And now they get a ball into the box. And so it disrupts our ability to control the game in our attacking third, if that, if that makes sense. And so, and so, you know, the onus is on the guys coming in to really think about keeping the ball moving keep in possession of the ball so that we can continue to mount pressure. Because any little any little bad giveaway, it's like taking the air out of a balloon. It just starts to fizzle. And what we want is just to keep growing that balloon until it pops and the, and the ball's in the back of the net. And so um, those are things, again, that, that, that we'll hit on. And something that we've talked about, the importance of being ball secure in, in that final third. And then there's a moment where you get 20 yards from goal, and that's where you want to express. Because now our lines have moved up to the point where if there is a loss of possession, we can repress. But if it's in that middle third and you're cheap with the ball, you got your back line who's still trying to be a support, you got your midfielders that are trying to be support, and you lose it underneath those, that, those two lines, and it just takes the, the wind out from our shows. Chicho had three shots. It looked like they were all in frame. Maybe the first one wasn't. The second one was that day in St. Clair. The third one got pushed over the bar. Suppress a little bit. That, that, that's that's the only way, you know. The only way to get out of a, 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 a scoring slump is uh, to keep shooting, keep you know. And one of them is going to one of them are going to go in. Uh, there was one in the first half where he played it to uh, Dom. I thought he was going to shoot it from distance. Um, Dom caught it back. Um, so again, I, I think he's 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 doing a really good job of again working defensively for the group, but also putting himself in positions to score a goal. And I think, you know. Uh, Sinclair's save on him in the second half was a, was a, was a top save, and, and that could have easily been in the back of the net. So, again, there's only one way to do it, and just keep working through it. Diego Luna was dropping a little deeper when he came in. Is that something you needed, given how Minnesota was playing, or would you have preferred him further up? Yeah, so, again, against the back five, and, and their center backs like to follow, the, the way the tens find space is peeling off into the wide areas. And that's always a feel thing, because sometimes you can peel off 10 yards, and receive the ball and then attack the back line. Sometimes you have to really get wide to get on the ball. So it's, it's, it's really giving the players the tools, the, the way to think about that, and then allow them to, to really think about and, and what that means in, in real time. So at halftime, Diogo and Crooksy peeled off really wide. And, and it is only important to peel off on the ball side, but on the weak side, we should be thinking our outside central defender should be engaging that space so that our 10 can stay in the pocket, so that we have numbers in and around Chicho so we can have combinations. So it's, so it's 
possession's a really, it, it's a kind of a fruitless stat where what are you doing with the possession? Um, and so we had a lot of the ball, but we were just kind of creating an umbrella shape around their, their, their you know, their, five, their, their three, two uh, attack, uh, defending shape. Obviously the guys have to recover tomorrow and you've got to travel Friday. There's not a lot of time to prep for San Jose. It's the last place team and an opportunity. So what is the message with the very little bit of time you're going to have to prepare? Well, again, I think for me, it's always improving on the previous game. Uh, there's no, there's no secret. Like, I, I don't know, um, you know, going to every game, we want to win the game. And there's so many phases of the game that you have to be really good at to win it. You, you know, like I said, our, our box defending against Austin was terrible. Tonight it was really, really good. And so, okay, so now we score those goals that we did against Austin or Portland, and you have really good box defending, then, then you win the game. So for me, it's always about process. It's always about getting one game better um, and identifying the areas that you need to continue in to, to continue to get better. And so that's it. And then it just becomes a question of, 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 of legs, right? Fatigue and, and a three-game week. Um, and so that will be something that will, uh, you know, We'll check how the guys recover, but you know there'll probably be a few changes from today's uh, starting group, especially with uh, Bears' expulsion. Hey, Pablo. Um, in, after the red card, did you kind of make a concerted effort to pull back a little bit? It didn't look like you were quite going for the win at that point. Um, again, I think in this game, given the way the game was feeling, um, we wanted to play forward more, right? So you have Ando on the right side and Chicho up ahead. And, and again, you're going to be at, you're, you're going to be down numbers, and we ended up playing back to our goalkeeper a lot. So again, I'm thinking in these great learning moment is if Alex is in receiving the ball in the wide channel, and we have Ando and Chicho up front, we got to be looking for these guys. So it's like it's 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 not that we're we're just our our the way we try to control games with the ball requires 11 players, um, and 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 so it, it's not it was just a a tweak that. That again, we're going to a four-four-one where we don't have uh, another attacker. So again, I think it's more about with the ball. What are we trying to do? Um, and we want to put pressure on their center backs. We don't just want to go back to Zach and have him leather a ball back. So again, things that we'll continue to address just in case this stuff happens in the future. And then any concern or um, worries on your side about discipline amongst the team? And it was a little heated out there. And no, I think it's it's football. It happens all over the world players get upset and I think that's what I you know and I think for the most part this year um, I, I don't know how many red cards we've had there's there's not been an emotional um, two two red cards this year so you're 34 games two red cards that's not that's not a bad clip that's a pretty disciplined group um, but but again uh, tempers are going to start to flare emotions are tight the games are tighter every decision is cal it has to be calculated and it has to be from a place of understanding that your opponents are going to try to provoke you and, and you just got to be above the fray Pablo, hablando de, de disciplina, uh, todo Quentin tuvo un excelente partido, en mi opinión, por lo menos. Uh, ¿Puedes hablar de su crecimiento en esa posición de lateral derecho que normalmente él juega de central? Sí. Talking about discipline, Philip Quinn had a great game today. How do you think about his development from usually playing center back to now playing outside that position? No, yo creo que el, el Philip es un, un muy buen profesional. Yo creo que todas las man to, 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 cuando estamos entrenando siempre llega temprano, siempre está cuidando el, 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 el cuerpo, siempre hace preguntas tácticas que a lo mejor no, no entiende. Eh, y en cada partido es un, eh, es un, es un jugador que, tiene, que toma mucha responsabilidad para el, tra el trabajo de él, pero también para entender las posiciones de los compañeros, así puede comunicar. Y para mí, Es uno de los mejores jugadores de ese tema de, de, de la comunicación y, y es un jugador que quiere la responsabilidad. Y yo creo que esta noche fue fundamental para el equipo y, y va creciendo como si ya tiene mucha experiencia y solamente ha jugado en este nivel, este, el, el, el más partidos que ha jugado en su carrera profesional es con nosotros. Y así está. Está agarrando un, un buen nivel y va a ser un jugador clave para nosotros llegando a los playoffs. Um, that he's a really good professional. That he's always one of the first ones to practice. Is always asking questions. Good tactics is something he doesn't understand. He's also made a great effort of communicating with his teammates and understanding the positions of his, of his teammates. Um, and that he's one of the best communicators on the team. 
and that he's keep growing and he obviously has had the most games here during his professional career than he has before. So he's just going to keep growing and learning and he's going to be a fun little part of this team. Can you comment on Brian Vera's kind of impulsive decision that had gone him a red card this season and last season and his baby temper? Sí, no, lo, lo dijiste muy bien. Para mí, el, el, el Vera es un jugador que juega con mucha emoción, mucha pasión y siempre a una línea que si está jugando, si llega a esa línea, es un jugador de primer nivel. Cuando se pasa, es como todos los jugadores en, en, el, en el fútbol que pierden la cabeza eh, y, y hace daño a él, pero hace daño al grupo también, porque es un jugador clave para nuestro grupo. Así, estos son momentos, eh, y, y me pasó a mí también como jugador, tuve que aprender cómo mantener la, 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 la cómo, cómo mantener las emociones en momentos difíciles. Y eso para él va a ser el desafío más grande. Porque con el balón, sin el balón, cuando estamos hablando eh, de la técnica de defender, la técnica de jugar un pase, eso lo tiene. Pero ahora el próximo eh, paso es que entiende cómo controlar las emociones en momentos calientes, en momentos como vamos, vamos a conseguir en los playoffs. So Brian plays with a lot of emotion and passion, and there's like a threshold of when he does that, he's a top class player, but when he kind of passes it, he just becomes like any other soccer player that loses his head. So the biggest challenge for Brian is going to be able to learn to control his emotions in high heated moments and games that it's tight. Um, so that's going to be the biggest challenge for Brian. <coughs>